actually very simple but you may not have realized it he reigns when oceans roar he reigns above the storm you see that above the storm let me put it this way he reigns above your storm when when life is roaring at you and it's bringing you this fear and this trembling God is above the storm God is above whatever you're going through. And he reigns from above. And he pours out his blessings. And he pours out his power. And he pours out his will on your life. He's enthroned on high. Don't forget that. You need to look beyond the storm. You need to look past the storm. And I wanted to sing it quietly. I love this part. I wanted this part to be just belted out. I wanted the, the band just to raise the volume. I wanted you to, to shout and sing it with all that's within you. When the storm goes by, be still and know that I am God. So we're going to sing it quietly this time so that you will not focus on what the band is doing. But you focus on what God is doing. Through the storm. In spite of the storm. And here it comes to some of you that are having trouble in this area because of the storm. Sometimes it's the enemy that causes the storm. Sometimes we cause the storm. And we cause those problems to come upon ourselves because of bad decisions. Right now, I'm, I, need, I needed you to hear that, but that's not my concern. My concern is to get you focused on the one who reigns above the star, enthroned on high. Lord Almighty reigns. Roar, he reigns above the storm. 
heaven's mercy
Because you reign, you are enthroned on high, so we praise you. We praise you in spirit, and we praise you in truth. Because you are the one and only true God, the creator of heaven and earth. And we glorify you. And we glorify you. And we praise you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you that you are here. We thank you that you love us so much that you sent your one and only Son, Jesus, our Messiah, the Christ, the Lord. And we praise you. Father, thank you. My prayer is, Lord, that you would continue with the presence of the Holy Spirit here upon us throughout this service, that you would speak to us, you would help us, but you would also receive our praise and receive our prayers because we turn to you and you alone. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. The Bible speaks of a clap offering unto the Lord. Uh, if you study the Old Testament, you'll see that the children of Israel, when they started praising the Lord, it got noisy. It got real loud. We need a whole bunch of trumpets and trombones and saxophones and more drums because he's worthy of all of us just giving all we got to him in praise. Right now you have two instruments. Let's lift those hands up to God and give him a praise offering. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Turn to someone and greet them this morning. Give them a holy hug, high five, a wave. You know, don't, don't do the this princess wave. Don't do that. But. <laughs> As you're finding your way uh, back to your seats, we just have a few announcements for you. <laughs> hey, oh, look at that. <laughs> I guess I forgot to tell the sound guy that I was going to make announcements it's after. The voice of the <laughs> oh, well, happy new year. Um, we're so glad you guys uh, were able to come out and join us in worshiping this morning. And uh, We just have a few announcements. There's a few things going on uh, to be aware of. Starting tomorrow, I believe it's tomorrow, is the, uh, the, the citywide uh, 21 days of prayer and fasting. And um, it's a time for us to just really turn, turn our focus to God. And, and we're hoping that you all, you, you're all going to join with us as we do that. It's at different churches around the city uh, every day. There's something going on every day during this. There's a service. Ours, um, we're going to be hosting here is on Monday the 23rd, and there'll be a prayer service here starting at 7. And um, you can come, and we're going to sing a little, we're going to pray a little, um, and we're just going to, like I said, turn our focus to God and, 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 and put everything that we have in Him. And, you know, a, a lot of people think a lot of different things about fasting when you think of fasting. Everybody thinks, you know, immediately it's not eating. 
But it's not just necessarily just not eating. There's a few different ways that you can if you want to think about it. Um, one is obviously like a complete fast, um, where all you have is water. And that's, you know, you can do that. That's hard to do for 21 days. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure how well I would do on that, but uh, that, that is some dedication. And, and you certainly will be blessed by it, that's for sure. Um, but if you're like me, and, 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 and uh, don't think you can hang on for 21 days, um, you can do things like a liquid fast or a juice fast, where that's all you have is, is juice to, to, to carry you through. You can do a partial fast just by skipping a, a meal and spending that time in prayer instead of eating, um, just to give something to focus and, and change, help, help, hopefully help change our perspectives as we go through. And um, you can do, uh, I don't know if anybody's heard of this, it's the Daniel Fast, um, where you don't eat meat or sweets. Um, it's just uh, cutting out one main, um, main thing that you, that's usually there. And again, that's just to help us to remember as we, as we pull that back that we are giving to God and that we are giving our attention to God. And you can do things like a, a soul fast, which would be like, um, you know, cutting out social media or TV or um, video games, anything that you do on a regular basis that you're setting aside for that time and taking that time Amen. to turn your focus back to God. Because that's really what this is all about, is, is, is focusing our hearts, our minds, and our bodies back on God and getting Him back to that so that we can hopefully start this year out stronger and 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 with more intention of being with God and living for Him. So that all starts tomorrow. That's right. So uh, whatever 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 you're going to do with that, however you're going to do, that's between you and God. And I I, I my prayer is that you would be in prayer this evening as you prepare for this upcoming um, this this uh, 21 days. And listen to God and do what He is calling you to do in this. And so we're really hoping that you're all going to join us. Also coming up this week is, or this month, not this week, but this month is our men's breakfast. And that's on the 21st, and I believe it's at 9.30. 9.30. I was close. I was going to say 9, and that was, and that was off. But it's, it's at 9.30. So men, it's a great time. Um, we have a, a fantastic time of fellowship, and there's usually food. And, oh, there will be food. Uh, there will be food, and there will be there will be a, a message and a word, and it's going to be it's it's a great time, and we really encourage you all to come out and join us in that. Oh, it's a potluck. Bring food. Bring food. Then there is food. If you bring it, we will come. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if you bring it, we will eat it. That's for sure. That's for sure. So uh, hopefully we're going to see you guys there. Hopefully that. Uh, uh, this next, the, the, the prayer and the fasting that happens uh, starting tomorrow is going to be good with you, and uh, we just want to hope that you're blessed in that. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Yeah, brothers, we're going to be sending out some text messages and wanting you to sign up for a specific... Uh, you can let us know what you're going to bring. So last time, uh, we had a lot of potatoes, huh? A lot of potatoes. <laughs> Yeah, so we still want potatoes, but we do want eggs and sausage and other things as well. As well, so so you'll be receiving a text probably next week to say what are you going to sign up for, and then come because I'm going to bring a word. I'm going to bring a word, and it's you're you're going to be challenged and strengthened. Also, if I, if this is your home church, um, then let's support our family by tithing, by giving tithes and offering. If uh, you, Rocky's over there, uh, he's, he's doing his, his Anna White uh, impersonation again. You can uh, drop off an envelope into the black box, and, or you can do the um, PayPal on, on, the, on that little mini pad, or you can uh, do Zelle by actually using my cell phone. You can do Cash App and uh, Venmo, all through using my phone. Uh, it doesn't go into my account. Don't get scared. It goes right to the bank account, the church bank account. Yeah, so we want to do that. Okay, children, you thought I forgot. Children, you are dismissed to your class 
with reverence to the house of God, and I don't even get a clap. I finally remembered after 20 years in the ministry, I finally remembered that they go, you don't care. <laughs> Today I'm starting a brand new series. Now, I want you to, to know something. We're going to be talking about the glory of God and our race into God's glory. Now, that's kind of an interesting way of putting it, a race. But our theme verse through this entire, uh, probably three months, is Hebrews 12.1. And in Hebrews 12.1, and we'll talk about this in just a minute, it talks about, well, there it is right there. So let's read it. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. I'm going to set a race before you. I'm going to set what I believe is God's will for New Joy Church and I'm going to challenge you to join in this race that we would run. Where are we running? We're, we're running into God's glory. We're running into God's will for our life and our church. There was, and I'm going to talk about, well, I won't talk about this, but I mentioned on our, the 20, last year, if you were here on the 21 days of prayer meeting that we hosted, Pastor Cameron Unruh gave a prophetic word. I don't know if you heard it or maybe I'll bring up the clip because I still have it and he prophesied over New Joy Church and he prophesied revival that the glory was going to come and just like the sprinkling of a shower whether you or not revival our church yeah, you may not see it. Yet, but you will, because the sprinkling of the shower of God's presence has begun. But there is an outpouring. If anyone knows about outpouring, it should be California. Rains. You guys probably hadn't noticed. But we lost one of our sanctuaries out here come to church, I'm going, look at that. It blocked the parking lot. It pulled it up by its roots and it was laying right across the parking lot just the other day. Ah. So we're, we're so pain. Very soon, I hope it's tomorrow. I hope it's, I, I hope it's right now. We begin to see the album right now. Oh, Friday, Saturday, we felt it. We saw it. We experienced it Friday and Saturday with our uh, volunteer workshop. It's begun. My challenge is oh, we, need, we need to get out to the ranch. We, we can stay home and be nice and cozy. We need to enter into this full force and let the outpouring overflow our lives. Today's message is a preparation for the series. It's also a preparation for you to understand where, like we did when we relaxed home, but we are moving into his presence with greater purpose and with greater motivation. We need more of God. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity that you've given me to share your word. Help me speak clearly as I should, that they would hear the heart of God and not words from a man. And that we would, together, enter your glory. We will run this race that you have set before us. And we will not turn back. We will not give up. Until we enter in to the full-blown revival promised. 
in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So we're going to look at verses we do only today. This will be it for that verse, and then we're going to the chapter. Each week, we're going to take one, one first verse out of the that and take God's Lord. But today, we're going to be because it goes into the Greek word and pulls out a deeper meaning so that sometimes, you guys may not realize it, but the English language sometimes doesn't give the full definition of the Greek word. So I'm going to use the Amplified today. So number one, write this down. Faithful. And he'll pour out his glory on our church. It's, it's a promise. It's understand and believe is faithful. And he will actually do it. Here's the first part of Hebrews chapter 1. The very first, chapter 12, I'm sorry. Chapter 12, the first part of verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so many witnesses. Let's stop right there. What does that mean? That there's evidence that there, in chapter 11, it talks about all, all the witnesses of God's glory. You know people. You have people in your own life. You've seen their lives change because of the God. You've seen their lives change because they went into God's presence. They went into God's glory. They got serious about the Bible. And their lives have never been the same. Remember that. Think about that. Michelle and I, we just look at each other. And, and the other day she said, um, she said that we wouldn't have made it if it wasn't for Jesus. She's telling the truth. She's not. She wasn't mad at me. I wasn't being a knucklehead. We were just talking. But if it wasn't for Christ at the center of our lives, and then because he's at the center of our lives, he became the center of our marriage, we're headed to 50. We're headed to 50. We're at 40. Thank you. We're at 49 and a half. Well, 49 and one third. Because we'll come October 20th, it's fitty. You like how I said that one? Fitty? Yeah, 50 years. That's not too shabby. Of course, I always tell everyone I've, I've been happily married for 41 years, and out of 50, that's not too bad. <laughs> but think about that. You have witnesses that you can look to, that should inspire you to believe that if your life is in a mess, if your life's about to fall apart, you can turn to God because I'm nobody special. Guess what? God fixed me before I became a pastor. God fixed Michelle before she became uh, this wonderful servant of the Most High God. It's a, a result of what God's glory has done that we do what we do now. Don't you have anyone you can turn to, that you can look to? Therefore, since we are surrounded by such great cloud of witnesses, who by faith have testified to the truth of God's absolute faithfulness. I'm telling you, He is faithful. My life is imperfect. I wish things had been different in my past, and I'm hoping, well, I know God's got something great for my future, because I ain't done yet. Amen. But he's faithful. God has always been faithful to his will for my life. Oh, did you hear what I just said? God has been faithful to his will to my life. Because sometimes my will doesn't quite line up with God's will for my life. My desires sometimes are faulty. But if I could, I would tell you, and don't do it, but if we had time, I would tell you, get your phones out, turn on the camera, now hit that little button that flips you around so you can see yourself. And I say, look in the mirror. You know you've been doing stuff in God's will.
Oh, no, he didn't. Oh, yes, he is. Listen. I mentioned earlier, Pastor Cameron prophesied the Bible over our church at the last 21 days of prayer. We've got to believe it. It's not going to happen if we don't believe it. Well, that was a nice thing to say. What a nice man. He said something so nice about us. Uh-uh. No, he didn't. He spoke God's word over us. And if we don't believe it, we will not enter into it. Let me put it this way. Because I'm already there. But we, not just me, we've got to want revival. We've got to want God's presence, God's outpouring. That's got to be a top priority for us. And we have to do things that are in line with God's purpose so we see it happen. Oh, by the way, if I didn't tell you earlier, it's already begun. You have a decision to enter in with us or just watch us be filled to overflowing with his joy. I'd rather you join us. 1 Thessalonians 5, 19 to 24. Let's look at this quickly. This is going to help us prepare for, for us into what God has already begun. Do not put out the Spirit's fire. All right? So, in other words, don't fight it. If God's glory comes down, if you're singing a song, and just like the, the last song we sang, and, and we were praising God, holy, holy, that, that whole, that whole uh, Revelation song. And you feel a tear coming down. You, you feel his presence coming down. Don't fight it. Don't say, no, 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 no. That made me cry. It's not that song. It's God's Holy Spirit. Oh, no, no. I'm not going to raise my hands. I see those people over there. Uh-uh. Don't fight. Don't stop what the Holy Spirit wants to do in your life. Are you hearing what the Spirit is trying to say to you? Stop fighting His will for your life. He wants to bless you. He wants to use you. He wants to fill you. He wants to empower you. Don't fight it. Don't put out the Spirit's fire. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. I mentioned a prophecy. How do we treat prophecies with con contempt. We're not going to talk about Cameron. We're going to talk about Pastor David. We're going to talk about me. So Pastor David says, uh, he thinks he feels, he thinks he hears from God and somebody needs a specific healing and he gives this word of prophecy and he gives this word of knowledge saying, God wants to heal this person or that person or this disease or that disease. How do you take it? With contempt? Yeah, right. He always says that stuff. Yeah, right, there he goes again. He's just trying to show off. That's treating prophecies with contempt. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Because I don't care what you think about me. I really don't. I want you to love me. I want you to, 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 to respect me. I want you to take me out to lunch. The bottom line is I really don't care. My, my life is not dependent on how you feel about me. My life is dependent. My daughter's going to get it. That's all I got to say. Thank you, Stephanie. Stay away from her. She's nothing but trouble. <laughs> Stephen. Just. <laughs> okay, stop it. Don't hold prophecies with contempt, but do this, 21. Test everything. Hold on to the good. Test everything. Is Pastor, what Pastor David is saying, is it really in the Bible? Test it. Is he really speaking the word of God? Test me. I'm not above correction. 
Oh, but hold on. But if I give a word about your life, and how did he know that? I don't know that, but God does. And if I give a word about your life in this service, grab onto it, hold it, and use it to transform your life. Test everything, hold on to what is good, avoid every kind of evil. That's pretty plain. If it's evil, avoid it. Stay away from it. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is coming back to take us home into his presence. Verse 24, the one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. God is faithful, and he's going to do something. And by the way, if I hadn't told you yet, it's already begun. It's already begun. The sprinkle has started, and I'm waiting for the outpouring. Number two. Number one, God's faithful. Number two, this is for us. We must take steps to prepare for revival. We have to prepare ourselves. Just like I did this morning. I went to the closet and I pulled out my coat. I pulled out Michelle's coat because it says it's going to rain. It's been raining this morning. I don't know if it's raining right now. But I was prepared for the rain. Are you prepared for the rain of God to come down upon us? Are you ready for the outpouring? We've got to get ready. Get ready. I'm not going to do PBJs. Don't worry. But we've got to get ready. Oh, did you get that? Good. The second part of verse, 12, verse 1. Stripping off every unnecessary weight. Stripping off every unnecessary weight. And the sin. We'll talk about the sin in just a minute. But let's talk about the unnecessary weight. Let's get rid of the things that hold us down. Let's get rid of the things that keep us back. Unnecessary. Unnecessary things. And I'm not talking about weight, my, the, the weight of my body. I'm talking about things that I carry around with, us, with me that keep me from entering in. Like late night TV. Yeah, but I wanted to see that movie. It's Saturday night, and I wasn't hanging out. It's Saturday night, but I want to watch that movie, and you go to bed at 2 a.m. and fall asleep, and then you wake up at 12, and, oh, we missed church. Let me tell you, any movie that starts off will start the next day. You don't have to see it once. You can DVR it. The, those things show over and over and over and over. Yeah, but I want to go to Regal Cinema and have popcorn. Go at 3 o'clock. <laughs> popcorn tastes better at 3 anyway. It's the second. That's good. Get rid of the things that keep you in keep you from God's presence. Get rid of the things that keep you from God's presence. Amen. Yeah, but Pastor D, we're going to be in the playoffs. We just got to win one more game today. It's the NFL. You know what NFL stands for? Not long because those games are going to be over and it starts all over next year. Get rid of the unnecessary weight. Let's go to the next part. And the sin which so easily and cleverly entangles us. Easily. Come on, you got to admit, some sins in your life, they get you real easy. The devil's clever, man. He, can, he tricks you right into that and you say, man, I, I promised God and I promised myself I wouldn't do that anymore. And all of a sudden, there I am. The devil has no... Let me put it this way. Don't get mad at me. The devil's no fool. But he plays us for a fool. We gotta...
put our foot down and say, enough is enough. That's it. You ain't going to pull me down no more. So what is a surefire way, a foolproof way to get rid of sin in our life? Is there a way? Sure. It's easier than you think. Confess your sins to God. First John 1 John 1.9 says, If you confess your sins, He is faithful. There's the word again. He is faithful and He is just to forgive your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. All unrighteousness. Confess that sin. Admit it, sin. Tell God, forgive me, God. You see, the problem is you confessing your sin. That's not the problem. The problem is after you confess your sin. That's the problem. Because after you confess your sin, after the tears have stopped, here we go again. We go right back to the same nonsense. And we need to confess it again. See, the problem is not that you haven't forgiven. The problem, the problem is you keep going back and doing the same nonsense. And you got nobody to blame but yourself. How, do you, how come you're so sure? Because I got nobody to blame but me. What kind of sins do we need to deal with? Colossians 3, 5, 9 says this, But put to death the sinful earthly things uh, lurking within you. you just, do you understand that you can put to death every sinful temptation that you struggle with? You can actually put it to death? Some of y'all waking up that old sin. Wake up, let's go. You can put it to death. So here we go. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality in all its forms. Impurity, that's just going, having these bad thoughts. Lust, by the way, lust goes beyond a sexual temptation. You can lust after money. You can lust after anything. Whatever you yearn for, you can lust over feet for feet, food. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil. Don't be greedy. For a greedy person is an idolater. Do you hear that? Don't be greedy. You want more stuff. You want this. You want that. Don't be greedy because that becomes an idol in your life. Greedy for money. Greedy for things. Greedy for material. Whatever you want to call it. Don't let those become idols. Worshipping the things of this world. Because of these things, because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. The anger of God is coming. You used to do these things when your life was still part of the world. When you, before you got saved, you didn't think that. You can, I'll be the first to admit, before I got saved, I was doing some crazy things that I didn't think were sin. It's just, hey, this is what I do. This is fun. This is life. This is, you know, whatever. And then, care of the world. I didn't think there was sin at all. Then I got saved. I got filled with the Holy Spirit. Then I really messed up and started reading the Bible <laughs> and found out all these things I was doing weren't right. So I stopped those things. And I continued to work on stopping those things. Verse 8, but now is the time to get rid of anger. Oh, hey, what? What anger? But well, you don't understand. My boss is a jerk. You don't understand. My neighbor keeps on. You can try to make any excuse you can. But anger is not good. Anger not only will separate you from God, eventually it'll tear you up physically. It'll mess you up. Physically, all that anger. 
Now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, dirty language. Don't lie to each other, for you have stripped off the same thing in the in the verse. Strip off the weights. Take off, strip off all that junk in our lives. Don't lie to each other, for you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. We've gotten rid of it. Let's go forward. Let's move forward. Let's not keep going backward into that junk. Let's get prepared for the revival will increase. Let's be prepared. Number three, we must run the race towards God's glory. Let's get in here and let's go. Let us run with endurance and active persistence. Get that? Endurance. Let's move. Let's do this. Let's work out. Let's go. And active persistence means we will never quit. We will not stop. Let's keep moving forward. The race that is set before us, looking away, oh, this is why I use this version. Set your eyes forward. You must look away from all that will distract us. There's a lot of distractions in our life right now. I look away from those distractions. I don't allow them to distract me. I keep moving forward. I, I run into people that get all upset about all sorts of different things. And they want me to join them in their righteous indignation. Uh -uh. I don't have time for that. I don't have time for all sorts of things that don't matter. Listen, I don't have time for things that will only affect me in this life. I want to be prepared for heaven. And you, all, some of y'all that have been with me for a long time, you understand this statement. It's, it's not about me getting to heaven. It's about me and who I take with me into heaven. I want to take my children. I want to take my grandchildren with me. I want to take you all with me into heaven for all eternity so I don't become with things that only affect me on earth. I deal with what I have to deal with. When something's broken at the house, we'll get it fixed. But I fix it and move on. I don't let it distract me Overwhelm me. Looking away from all that will distract us and focusing our eyes on Jesus. Focusing our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of faith. The first in, uh, in, incentive for our belief and the one who brings our faith to maturity. Oh man, I love that. One that's going to make us mature in our faith. But I've got a problem. I'll just be honest with you. Maybe this is real. Maybe this is imagined. But this is how I feel about us as a church. Galatians 5, 7. We were running a good race. Who cut in on you and kept you from obeying the truth? We were running a good race. We got into this building in November of 2019, and man, we we were packed. We, we doubled in size in three months. Then all of a sudden, there was just ten of us, and all of a sudden, we had to live stream everything. We were running a good race. Something cut us off. The problem is, what cut me off for two months, if I remember quickly, we went back uh, to live services. We didn't wait until the government said, okay, you can have your live services again. We did not wait. We called everybody back and said, you know what, 
this ain't right, this ain't God's will. We did what we thought was right. We obeyed uh, the law, did stuff. We sanit so we started sanitizing everything every week, spraying walls, spraying windows, spraying bathroom handles, everything. Cleaning everything and then inviting people back, wearing masks. And we went, what, from 10 to 20? But we were over 100. Where was everybody? Now, don't get me wrong. The disease is real. Don't get me wrong. We need to do the things that keep people healthy. If you come to church and you want to wear a mask, we have masks here. We've got more than enough. You can get the, wear the mask. That's fine. I'm not saying that. I'm saying it's what we were told was a lie. We were lied to. Yes, people died of COVID, but people were dying of other things. And the reports from just about every hospital was exaggerated. Did you know the year before people were dying of the flu? But did you hear of one case of people dying from the flu? Hundreds of, uh, hundreds of thousands throughout the, the, the United States were dying of the flu. But not in 2020. They lied to us. We will do all we can to stay healthy. If you're sick, stay home. Do us a favor. Stay home. If I'm sick, I will stay home. But we have not gone back. We have not come back. There are still too many people who've been cut off for whatever reason. That's how I feel. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm yelling at the wrong people. You're here. I shouldn't be jumping all over you. But I want you to know where I'm coming from. That's how I feel. We were running a good race, and something cut us off and kept us from obeying the truth. But this needs to be us. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 and 25. This needs to be us. Do you not know that in a race, all runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in a way as to get the prize. Run like you really believe you are a winner. Run like you really believe there's revival starting here and that we're going to enter into it and we're going to see souls saved. We're going to see miracles happen. We're going to see lives transformed. Amen. Run like you really mean it. Get in, get in the game. Come up to me and say, Coach, put me in. We're in football season, coach. Put, you know, that's what John Allison did just on Friday night. He said, put me in, coach. And he's starting a ministry next week. And after church, we're going to have coffee, and we're going to have donuts, and we're going to have fellowship, and John and Marsha are going to do it all. Why? Because he said, put me in, coach. He's ready to get involved. He's ready to do what God's called him to do. Are you? You want to sit in the sit on the bench, or do you want to get put in? Let's go. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training, so we've got to get ready. We've got to get prepared. We've got to do what we need to do to get in the game. They do it to win a crown that will not last. After the Super Bowl, it starts all over. It doesn't last, but when we do it to get a crown. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Forever. We are in the business of forever. Last thing I want to say is for we must be willing to endure our cross. I told the, I told the, the group uh, on this weekend, I said, sisters, don't get mad at me, but I got to put it like this. Yeah, take it like a man. Take it like a man of God. Take it like a woman of God. Yes, it gets hard. Yes, it gets tough. But we're going to stand firm. And we're going to do it regardless. Hebrews 12, 2, the last part of it, 
for the joy of accomplishing the goal set before him, who for the joy of accomplishing the goal set before him endured the cross, take up your cross, disregarding the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, revealing his deity, his authority, and the completion of his work. Who for the joy? Let's do it. Whatever God's called us to do, let's do it. Because the joy will be poured out upon us. You know, bottom line is this. We need to give up our own ways, and some of us have not given up our old ways yet. But we have to give up our own way and take up God's way for our life. Luke 9, 23, 25. Then he said to the crowd, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross daily and follow me. Give up your own way, your own desires, your what you think you need. Give them up. Take up your cross, whatever that is, and go forward following Christ. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. Man, I see that too many times. But if you give up your, your life's sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but are yourself lost or destroyed? What if you get everything you want? You make all the money you want. You have all the success you've ever wanted. But at the end of your life, there's nothing but despair. And fear of eternal damnation. It's time for us as a body of believers to enter in, press in, and run race into God's glory. Amen? Amen. 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 Father, thank you for this, after, this morning and now <laughs> this afternoon. As I conclude this message, help us to do your will. You are faithful. You will see us through. But we need to be prepared for revival so that we can run and take up our cross and follow you. Thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for those that are listening. May you continue to bless them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The service is over, but I want to invite you to come and pray. Come and pray up here facing the cross and ask God to show you. If you need to go and you've got plans, hey, I, that's cool. Go on, do it. That, that's fine. But I'm going to take some time here and just pray individually. I'm not going to pray for anybody other than you need to come and say, Lord, what's your will? Help me to run the race you have set before me. Amen. God bless you, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Some cookies.